everyone. Welcome to our special weekly program of TVRI Yogyakarta, Jogja Highlight. I'm Meta Dokang and I'm your host today. As usually every weekend, we will give you an overview or information about tourist destination, culinary, and also the heady craft of Yogyakarta. Okay, let's start the program. This is Jogja Highlight for today. Let's start the program with open the culinary segment. We will give you uh, information about the typical menus from Yogyakarta. Not only that, we will take you around Yogyakarta to go to some places that have combination, good menu and good atmosphere and of course affordable prices. Okay, this is culinary segment in Jogja Highlight. If you're visiting tourist attraction in the southern region of Yogyakarta, Prizli in Bantul district, well, maybe you can choose the culinary mangut catfish who is on Imogiri Road West Sumber Agung Jetis Bantul. This shop does not like special at first glance because it looks more like a house. But make no mistake, the owner who is now the second generation of who is will serve a special dish namely mangut catfish. Mangut catfish for Yogyakarta resident may already be a familiar dish. Fried catfish is cooked with coconut milk that has been seasoned until the meat is really soft. It must feel good on the tongue. Mangut catfish does have two versions. The catfish is fried and the catfish is grilled or smoked with coals. With a recipe that has been passed down from her mother-in-law, Ari Astuti, as the next generation still maintains the recipe of mangut catfish since it was first sold until now. The cooking method, which is also still traditional using firewood, is still used because it is believed to make food tastier. Cookies is clean, then fried until slightly dry. After that, it is cooked with coconut milk sauce that has been seasoned. The spice consists of garlic, shallot, bay leaf, laos, chili, salt, and ginger. If you are ordered at serving a mangot catfish rice, you will automatically be treated to fresh vegetable. They have papaya leaf, spinach leaf, sprout, basil squash, thread leaf, and puyang leaf. You can also mix this vegetable with seasoned grated coconut to make trancham. Not only fresh vegetable, sambal trasi and oseng oseng green chili in mangut catfish tolbu is also a must try spicy champion. Not only mangut catfish in this stall, there is also fried catfish, fried chicken and chicken mangut as well as tofu and tempe bacem. It's quite easy to find the location of this Buis stall. From Yogyakarta city center, you can take the road to Jitis Bantu intersection. This stall open 8 in the morning until 8 at night. For one portion of mangut catfish rice complete with fresh vegetable, the price is only 20,000 rupiah. Many business places closed due to the COVID-19 pandemic did not discourage culinary entrepreneurs from continuing to develop their business. The typical culinary business of the sea still has prospect even amid the pandemic. COVID-19 pandemic has a major impact on the culinary business sector. In order to continue to be able to survive culinary business activities must adapt to new community behavior, such as strict health rules and limit time and capacity when operating. One of the culinary business actors, Agusu Santos, states that business actors must change marketing strategies that are relevant to current conditions. According to Agus, the culinary business still has prospect even in the midst of a pandemic. The selection of minus and location of culinary business is also very influential of the existence of culinary business that can survive. 
Agus Santo choose a traditional fated table menu and seafood as well as a location in the Pendawa Harjo Sewan Bantul area with certain consideration. In Bantul, the basic ingredients of vegetable and traditional spices and fish products are abundant. While choosing a location because in Bantul, it is a tourist destination for culinary lovers from various regions. A business that has been open since early December 2020 as an effort to educate the public to keep up their business in the midst of various challenges. He also recruit 15 employees or of whom were victim of layoff from a number of food stores that were forced to close due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Local culinary that is now rarely found and even increasingly rare is being hung by residents. One of them is Lode Lompong, which is a local menu in the slope of Merapi, Yogyakarta. Lode Lompong vegetable is made from local ingredients, namely taro plant stem, cooked with Lode seasoning. Traditional Japanese cuisine is formulated with special treatment to remove the remaining septaro so that the delicious taste of the dish appears. Located at the Ichikiwir stall in Nepom village, Candi Binangun, Pakam, Sleman, this culinary is a typical signature in the Merapi Slope tourist area. According to the stall manager, Lade Lampang culinary is sold after by visitors because they want to feel the sensation of the old time menu or traditional village menu. Beside family groups, Lade Lampang is much sold after by culinary lovers to tourists from various regions. At the moment of Ramadan this year, the store manager provides a return package which can be eaten for four people consisting of rice, lote lompong, papaya leaf equipped with fried chicken to other side dish. Besides that, with price that are still very affordable starting at 5000 per portion and for the return package for 25000 to 45000 for the package, Lode Lampong tastes delicious and just right savory. Visitors can also order a variety of other typical Merapi slope menus from Mangut Tilapia, Mangut Catfish, or Shankikil to other village menus. For tourists who want to enjoy the natural scenery of the slope of Merapi, this shop also provides electric scooter with rural atmosphere route to rice fields. Visiting Yogyakarta should not just stick to one place but try to explore some other special places. One of them is Omakopi Menore. Omakopi Menore is in Klon Progo district, Pricely in Madigondo, Sariharjo, Samigalu, Klon Progo. This coffee shop is currently popular among coffee lovers. Actually, this coffee shop has been open since 2014. This coffee shop offers a variety of original coffee drinks from the Menoreh Mountains, namely Arabica and Robusta coffee. The authenticity of the coffee is the main attraction because visitors can really taste the typical coffee drink of the Menoreh Mountains directly from the farmers. Coffee lover will feel satisfied when ordering coffee at Oma Kopi Menoreh. This shop provides a wide selection of varied coffee with special flavors. Some of the special coffee choice that are favored by visitors are Kopi Ijo and Kopi Lanang. Kopi Lanang is said to have very good benefit to increase tummy and help reduce migraine symptoms, while the type of Kopi Ijo has benefit for treating gold, lowering cholesterol, and is also suitable for those on a diet. For those who like to taste expensive coffee, here's also available Luak coffee. Luak coffee is not from coffee eaten by domesticated seafood, but is coffee eaten by wild seafood. This shop not only offers authentic coffee from the Manare Mountains, but also offers a beautiful view. 
every visitor can experience drink coffee from a height while enjoying the blowing wind and seeing the beautiful view of the Menoreh Mountains. A group of housewives in Balai Chator Village, Gamping, Sub-District, Sleman District, Yogyakarta Special Region is able to produce traditional ready-to-eat drinks. The production is also in demand in the market so that it's become one of the source of income. With the main ingredient of the leaf of the bay plant, a group of housewives in Balai Chator Village produce traditional instant drink. With a number of ingredients for its composition, bay leaf are processed through a number of steps before into a drink. According to the actor of micro, small and medium enterprises, Nuri Suryawati, making drinks made from bay leaf, the initial idea arose from a number of properties that bay leaf have, one of which is able to reduce body odor. From the beginning, just trying to make it that, then produce in the large quantity. As for how to enjoy it, bay leaf powder is poured into a glass and brewed using hot water. Even this herbal drink can be consumed by children to the elderly. To facilitate marketing, bay leaf that have been processed in powder from our package using attractive packaging, including being supported by complete licensing such a household industry food production certificate. Every day, tourist destination in Yogyakarta has sprung up. Now, we will give you an information and take you to another places that maybe you and your family never go been there. There are several places that have the water-based tourist destination. So we will go check it in the tourist destination segment. Board with panoramic picnic, stop by Segaji Hamlet, Hargotirto Village, Kokap Sub-District, Kulon Progo, Yogyakarta. Segaji offer live in package or live and stay with local resident. Segaji is a hamlet inhabited by about 100 families with about 70 houses. The hamlet is quite clean. It is located on a hill in the Manoreh Mountains, which the villagers call Springish Hills. The majority of Segaji residents were making brown sugar and end sugar. The men climbed the coconut and tapped the sap in the morning and evening, while the women cooked the sap into sugar and iron sugar, take care of the children and farm around the hamlet. They also look for grass for their goats, milk them, and also look for the firewood for the stove to cook sugar. This kind of daily life is what guests can feel when staying there. Some resident house also become homestay that guests can stay in while in Segaje. There are 24 homestay. Here, guests will enjoy the life of the homestay owner. The package is cheap. Guests only need to spend 100,000 rupiah per person to stay for three days and two nights. They can enjoy village life, only two guests are allowed to stay in each homestay. Beside the short stay package, they also a learning package while enjoying the local culture. Among others, learn to paint, make batik, learn karawitan, to learn to dance. Each additional package guests only need to add between 15 to 50,000 rupiah per skill all supported by a rural atmosphere that is quite thick because residents agree to maintain the beauty of the village, namely about building, village roads, culinary to everyday residents wearing basca clothes and headbands. This is how our ancestors were, time may advance, but we want to maintain this concept. That is what is always held by the residents of Segaji. Sagaji developed like this in the midst of the growth of tourist destination in Hargortirto and its surroundings. 
many of these destinations have gone global. Maria Cave Queen of Peace, Jati Ningsih Lakes, is one of the places worth visiting to fill the vacation. Located in Jitar Hamlet, Sumber Arum Village, Moyudan Subdistrict, Sleman District, the cave, which was built in 1986, was blessed as the Cave of the Queen of Peace in 2000 by the Archbishop of Semarang, Monsieur Suharyo P.R. Under the thick trees saw the bank of the Progo River. No wonder if this Maria cave is so cool and beautiful. The existence of Sendang Tirtawaneng Banyu Panguripan or Tirtawaneng Banyu Panguripan Lake also adds the coolness. The atmosphere is calm and peaceful so that pilgrims can pray solemnly when doing religious tourism. At first, this cave was named Sendang Pusung or Pusung Lake. Then the name was changed to Sendang Jeningse or Jati Ningse Lake, which means the Swiss God, which truly bring peace. As a place of general pilgrimage for Catholic, the cave of Maria Sendang Jati Ningse has several supporting facilities, including the courtyard, spring complex, hall, chapel, and the Road of the Cross. As for religious tourism location, not far from the cave of Maria Sendang Jatinese, which can also be visited, are the cave of Maria Lawangse and the cave of Maria Lorde Sendang Sono. This location leads to the west located in Klon Progo district. One more tourism potential that's grown in Samigalu sub-district Bron Progo is the natural tourist attraction Watu Teke. This natural tourist attraction Watu Teke is located in Madigondo Hamlet, Sidoarjo Village, Samigalu sub-district Kulon Progo. The name Watu Teke is taken from the Japanese language where Watu means stone and Teke which means geiko. It is said that in this place there is a large stone that it used as a gecko nest. This Watutake natural tourist attraction presents a beautiful natural scenery that can spoil the eyes of tourists. The panoramic view of the beautiful green mountains coupled with a variety of photo spots add to the attractiveness of this object. Watutake is located in Madigondo village, Samigalu sub-district, Kulon Progo district. Indeed, this one village is quite hidden, so you have to go through various trips that are indeed quite adrenaline pumping from winding and uphill roads. Before arriving at the viewing post, it turns out that you really have to go through a long journey. But there is no need to worry, along the way to the weaving post, tourists can also take picture first with very beautiful view of flowers. Beautiful flowers can also be used as spots that are very popular with tourists, especially women. With natural nuance that have the beauty of various photo spots, it turns out that it makes the scenery attractive. Not only the viewpoint, but you can also see the view of the great wooden bridge usually have to take turns because it does not fit for photo of many people. The attraction of this Watutake village story view is the view of the green hill which is so beautiful that many people want to take it a photo spot. Now it's time to us to introduce you the handicraft of Yogyakarta or the creative industry in Yogyakarta. But right now we will give you an overview about the style of Yogyakarta, typical style of Yogyakarta, there is a lyric. So let's go find out in the handicraft or creative industry segment. A fabric with a strip patterns, lurik is no less popular than batik. Its beautiful color gradation always attract the eyes. Lurik fabric feels soft, comfortable when used. 
Each strand of lurid fabric is shown of the passion of the weavers. Amid the proliferation of machine technology, the Kurnia Lurik Fabric Production House still maintains the traditional ways of making. Operating since 1962, this production house used non-machine looms, relying on arm strength and accuracy during the weaving process. More than half a century old, the production house located at Krapyak Wetan Street, Panggung Harjo Sewan, Bantul, Yogyakarta, is the only lurid cloth production that still maintains the traditional values, while others are just memories and names. The weaver at Lurik Kurnia are mostly elderly. White hair with bones attacks is clearly visible beneath the skin several times justifying the location of glazes that fell from the bridge of his nose. Age does not dampen their attention to make clothes with stunning stripe. Weaving is not an easy thing. It requires diligence and accuracy when pulling the weaving machine. If the pull is too slow, the weaving results are tenuous. Conversely, if the pull is tight, the thread becomes tangled. Production with non machine loom not only maintains traditional values. In each strand of yarn, we were stuck a prayer for the lyric wear. In accordance with the philosophical meaning of the fabrics, namely rigs, which mean protective fans, this moment certainly does not occur in the lyric made by machine. The process of making lurid is quite long. First, the raw yarn is colored after which is left to stand for a day, half a day in the sun. The dye yarn goes into spinning. Then the colors of the yarn are arranged to form a motif known as nyakir. The result is then put into the loom. This process is called yuchu. It takes about 30 days to produce 100 meters of lurid fabric. The price of woven fabric at Kurnia Lurik is relatively affordable, 30 to 8,000 rupiah per se, depending on the weight of the fabric, 70 meters or above 100 centimeters. Motive and material also affect the price. During the month of Ramadan, of course, many people, especially Muslim, also prepare various things for it, not only food, but of course also clothes. If you want to look different and contemporary on it, then you follow the trend of it fashion this year. One of the famous young Indonesian designers, Lani Amborowati, recently displayed her fashion work which can be an inspiration for the community, especially Muslim women from young and mature circle. In the fashion show of fashion art held at Joglo Resto Bantul, dozens of retro chic theme fashion work were displayed which depict the joyful atmosphere of welcoming it. In addition to having nuance of local wisdom, the fashion work display also bring new color in the world of fashion art, where it's no longer considered to have high-end standards because the design and fashion design this time can be weighed by the general public. According to Lani, fashion work is a cultural manifestation where each work becomes the face of civilization with all the dynamic of its growth. In addition to displaying works with nuances of cheerfulness and brightness such as floral motif, pressing color and geometry, also display army look nuance clothing design in army style but still incorporate element of right and body. Where the fashion work is suitable for brave women. While other fashion modes displayed are linen clothing, which many people wear because of its comfort factors and environmentally friendly. All the fashion work displayed describe an atmosphere of joy and new hope the coming Ramadan and in all tree in 2023. It's been 30 minutes. I take you around to see another side of Yogyakarta. 
time is up and don't forget join us next week because we will see you with another stories about Yogyakarta. I'm Eta Dokang and all of crew Jogja Highlight would like to say thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to see us next week in Jogja Highlight. See you and goodbye.